On to some breaking developments coming in right this minute here at Weon. Indian Army has accused the Pakistani Army of mutilating bodies of two Indian soldiers. Indian Army has said that the despicable act of the Pakistani Army will be appropriately responded to. That's a strong statement that's been issued uh, by the Indian side. Uh, breaking developments coming in right this minute. The Indian Army has accused the Pakistani Army of mutilating bodies of two Indian soldiers. Our chief domestic correspondent, Karthike Sharma, is now joining us uh, on the broadcast. Over to you, Karthike. What more details do we have at this point? See, right now, uh, this uh, press release had been uh, released from the uh, uh, Northern Army Command. And the Army Command has said that in a very despicable manner, uh, the soldiers which were on patrol, uh, they, were, they were shot dead by the, uh, because of the cross-firing which was taking place in LOC. And once, you know, once, once the bullets hit them, they mutilated their bodies. And India has vowed in the press release that this action should be suitably responded to. Now, you would remember that uh, similar actions led to a couple of cross-border raids which were not claimed by the UPA. But in one e in incident which took place uh, during uh, BJP's time last year, and hence the surgical strikes took place. So, you know, continuously we live in an atmosphere uh, in India whereby, or uh, around LOC, to be very uh, specific, Mali, where soldiers, there's a war out there and the, so the bodies of the soldiers are mutilated. Now, right now we don't have the details. If you remember three to four, uh, five, four years back when UP was in power, they actually dismembered the body and took the heads away. It yes. was called head hunting and, th and India responded very strongly. Sushma Swaraj, a then leader of opposition Lok Sabha had spoken about it and a subsequent cross-border action took place. But this macabre uh, ritual of uh, uh, you know, dismembering the body is not only goes against the code of the war, but it also goes on to show that the Pakistan does not want any sort of normalcy on the border. Pakistan does not want a silent LOC or a silent international border. And more so, it creates a situation whereby they want to provoke Indian army into a harsher, bigger and a vicious cycle of violence but in this case it becomes a matter of honor for the regiment it becomes a matter of morale for the regiment and 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 and, and you know in time to come this 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 becomes a since it becomes a matter of honor molly it will have to be avenged but the issue is that pakistan continues to provoke india right akatike at this point do we have more details on these two soldiers uh, <clears throat> according to the latest that we are gathering they were a part of a team on patrol between two forward posts in uddampur is that correct absolutely molly uh, absolutely they were part of the patrol of a forward post in udhampur whereby uh, they, they they came under the crossfire but the issue is not that issue is not that, that the crossfiring was uh, taking place the issue is that they were targeted while on patrol sure. on the indian side and the bodies dismembered sure and another uh, low point, to say the least, uh, Karthike, uh, in the seething tension between the two countries, uh, especially in the backdrop of what's taking place uh, around Kulbushan Jadav. Yes, uh, you see, Kulbushan Jadav is one, one issue whereby the government of Pakistan wants to prove that you know, he's a RAW spy. And if you look at the, uh, the reasons which uh, they have, uh, you know, on the reasons on which you know, he has been, uh, he's being punished in Pakistan, and has been meted out the punishment uh, of death sentence. Is it, he comes across like a superman, as if uh, he he orchestrated 50 to 60 terror strike in Baluchistan. You know, uh, it look, it looks improbable, impossible, and preposterous. But in this case, you know, it's a clear signal. You know, you know, it also goes on to show that the army and the democratic establishment in Pakistan are not on the same page. Army calls the shot, and it shows that it calls the shot. And the fact that it is, uh, uh, you know, it, you know, it dismembered the body, it also goes on to show that. They, they, they are not really not interested in any peace talks. Right, and the barbarism that we've been talking about, Karthike, is something that it's not just uh, India, but the international community has condemned uh, repeated violations of international guidelines, of international law, and another low point now, uh, uh, dismembering and mutilating uh, bodies of Indian soldiers. This is not only a low point, it just goes on to prove that the Pakistan is not interested in any meaningful talk with the Indian government. And Pakistan wants to politicize further internationally the hot summer which India is facing in Kashmir. Kulbushan Jadav is part of that inventory. Yes. We, have to, we have to see it in the larger picture as to what Pakistani army intends to do, Molly. Right, stay with us, Karthike. Just a quick uh, roundup for the benefit of our viewers who might just be tuning in. These are the details 
is that uh, we've access for now. According to that statement that's been issued by the Indian side, two Jawans were killed uh, in unprovoked firing by Pakistan this morning. And uh, according to the latest that's coming in, their bodies were mutilated, the Indian Army has said. The Indian Army has also warned of appropriate response uh, for this, uh, what it calls a despicable act. Uh, now, as far as the details over the soldiers are concerned, they were killed and uh, were a part of a team on patrol between two forward posts in Uddhampur along the line of control uh, when they were attacked by Pakistan. This, according to uh, the latest statement that's been issued by the Northern Command, definitely an issue uh, that uh, India will rake up uh, because of uh, the tone and tenor in which that statement has also been worded. Uh, a despicable act is what the Indian Army is calling this in that statement issued by the Northern Command. Uh, these two Jawans uh, were killed in unprovoked firing by Pakistan this morning. Their bodies have been mutilated and the army has warned of an appropriate response for this despicable act. Retired Colonel V.N. Thapar uh, joining us on the broadcast for more on this. I'll just come back to you, Karthik, as well. Uh, Colonel Thapar, what do you make of uh, uh, this um, absolutely barbaric act by Pakistan, uh, this uh, killing of these two Indian soldiers and their bodies being mutilated. I am very sorry that uh, we have an army you who know, calls himself an army behaving in the most atavistic and jungly manner that any army in the world could do. This is savagery and brutality. This is criminality. It is not uh, soldierly, soldierly behavior. Once a man is dead, a soldier is dead, he is fallen, he is worthy of respect. But uh, this is the most heinous kind of uh, behavior that any army can do. What has happened is that we have not uh, taken any step to discourage this kind of a thing. It happened with Saurabh Kalia, it happened with Hemraj. Before that, that uh, Ilyas uh, Kashmiri, he had taken a head to Musharraf where he was given a cash reward of 8,000 bucks by Musharraf. They encourage this kind of a thing. No, no army in the world, let me tell you, make it very clear, no army in the world, forget about Geneva Convention, the human uh, conventions are there. Soldiering is a very noble profession. Any army worth its salt will never, never stoop to such a, such a low. Let Pakistan never forget that they had, we had 90,000 of their prisoners with us. Let them not forget that there were more than 62 hardened war criminals who had to be tried for war crimes. Even them, even then, we uh, behaved like a, a, a one soldier should behave to another soldier. But such is not the case with them, and our response should be hard and tough against this kind of a thing. Right, sir. The Indian Army in that statement has categorically stated that it will be uh, dealt with uh, by an appropriate response. As you're talking about uh, uh, the past instances, sir, do you say that the Indian side has not given out an appropriate response earlier and which is why we are staring at this situation today? I, I suspect so. I, you know, I am very close to Saurav Kalia hmm. and his family and I suspect that uh, the kind of... Uh, uh, the kind of reaction that should have come at all levels did not come. In fact, immediately after Saurav Kalia and other you know, Hemraj mutilation during that period, they had all kinds of biryani parties and uh, baskets going around with his diplomacy and things like that. Right. Those are very uh, wrong signals to send to Pakistan. Very, very wrong. What should the appropriate response in this uh, case now be, sir, according to you? Uh, look, uh, an appropriate response has to be a military response because the people who have been killed are military people. They are that is in violation of the ceasefire agreement. Yes. And they have been done with uh, either by the Pakistani army or abetted by the Pakistani army. So we, uh, the response has to be military. And mm -hmm. that response, I am always, every time an incident takes place, I always advocate that the response should be immediate and not delayed, because delayed response is no response. It should be immediate and it should be, they should be able to collect, connect that this particular response has been to this act of, uh, a bad act of theirs. Uh, unfortunately, that kind of a thing is not happening except for once when we went for the surgical strike.
this certainly is not an isolated incident. Uh, instances in the past of this of a similar nature. What, according to you, is encouraging Pakistan? And uh, would you say that this time around, Pakistan has again uh, crossed the red line when it comes to uh, this act of, uh, as we can call it, barbarism? Of course, there are no there are no two ways to look at it. It is, it is uh, you know, in the old times, in the ancient times. Even in the ancient times, we would read about the stories of people who respected the fallen soldier. Let me tell you, let me assure you, me, that no Indian soldier will ever get down to such a demeaning level. Never. Hmm. So, if this has happened, I mean, they are there to... Uh, the response has to be military. It need not be barbaric in this sense, but it has to be given. It has to be told to the response. You would, you say, you would you say that diplomatically taking this up would not be an appropriate response? Diplomatically, Pakistan doesn't understand diplomacy, doesn't understand fine norms and nuances, you know. They, they only require rough handling or they, what they give us. At least they should come to know that this is in response to that particular act. So I don't think this... Uh, and our diplomacy is so... Uh, soft to, towards Pakistan that it has no effect on them at all. All right, sir. Appreciate those uh, views and perspectives. Uh, appreciate your time. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, there we have uh, Colonel Thapar voicing his uh, view on how he feels that an appropriate response uh, this time around uh, should be given by the Indian side. That perhaps is the reason uh, why Pakistan gets encouraged to act in this uh, barbaric na nature uh, time and again. A despicable act is what the Indian Army has called this mutilation of two Indian soldiers.